Thank you, John McLaughlin. Issue one, the Malaysian jetliner. We're getting more and more red herrings that are winding up being pickled and put in the mayonnaise jar on Funkin' Wagnall's porch, the Chinese satellite, excuse me. Wow. The Chinese satellite, no red herring uh, pun intended right there. Those pictures turned out to be nothing. They, there was no debris in the sea uh, after uh, viewing those photographs from the Chinese satellite. And then this morning, the Wall Street Journal reporting, and if you can't believe the Wall Street Journal, what can you believe, uh, reporting that there was some information emitted from the engines of the plane four hours after the plane might have gone down, and the plane could have gone as far as Pakistan or Mongolia, but it turns out Malaysian authorities anyway saying that that was false. There was no information emitted from the engine. So where are we right now, Morton? I mean, we just talked to David Curley, ABC News correspondent. He essentially said uh, we're not very much further along than where we started when the plane first disappeared. Uh, two things, though, that are positive developments. One is that you've got NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board officials, that I guess are now more integrated into uh, dissecting the radar and working with Malaysian officials to uh, narrow the search. Number So that's number one, that's positive, more American involvement, more expertise. And number two, that you have a report, again, this is the Wall Street Journal, that American counterterrorism officials are exploring other Put it, call them conspiracy theories at this juncture to uh, you know, verify or deny any possibility that something other than a catastrophic event where the plane crashed into the water occurred. So I assume we're going to get to the bottom of this, uh, and, not, no pun intended. Well, it may, that's the most likely uh, explanation, that it went to the bottom. Right. But it, there was a nosedive right here. If it exp explodes in the air, there's big chunks in the sea. Issue two, thank you, John McLaughlin. Jim Oberweiss, according to a Marianne Ahern investigative report on NBC5, lists as his primary residence, uh, his residence in Florida. I hope he left a wedding dress like Rahm Emanuel did in his home here in Sugar Grove. Why would a guy who's running for the Senate in Illinois have his primary residence in Florida, Eleanor Clift? Well, tax purposes is why, but... Uh, he's so rich, why would he do that? Well, he's frugal. Uh, I'll tell you what, the interesting thing about this is if that is true, that his he's essentially uh, domiciled in Florida, he is a state senator, he's a sitting state senator, so he would have a residency problem with his current office, much less a political problem with respect to his residency for the office he is seeking, which is the U.S. Senate. Wrong! I just like to say wrong, like even John McLaughlin. Like I don't. I, he's got to have seen the legalities. You know, and by the way, you don't have to be a resident of the state of Illinois to be a senator. All well, you have to you, do is be an inhabitant. You have to be an inhabitant yeah. prior to the election right. to, to run for U.S. Senate. That's a the residency requirement. But, but look, I mean, this is this is just the optics of this are so bad. And Jim O'Rourke has already, from the response John Dempsey reported to a Tribune inquiry, is already mishandling this. This is exactly what Republicans like me feared about Oberweiss's candidacy again this cycle in a high-profile race where you have a vulnerable Durbin that is going to be another gaffil campaign as so many of his have been over the last decade. Kudos to Marian Ahern for the scoop on Oberweiss. I don't get it. I don't either. It's delicious. Though. It's too expensive sometimes. It's, it's a rare treat for me. Issue three. The Chicago Bears have given number 99 to Lamar. He's got two R's at the end of his name. Houston. That's Dan Hampton's number. But more importantly, Josh McCown just went to Tampa with Lovey Smith and is getting starting salary kind of money. He is the starter. Mike Dick. What do you think of that? Pat Buchanan. Mike Dick is the last number they're going to retire, right? So no Dan Hampton. Well, that's ridiculous. No, I agree with you. 54. Uh, I, I'm, 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 10 McCown. I'm sorry we lost the, uh, we, the Bears lost their starting quarterback, so it's oh. good news for Tampa. Oh, oh. Issue four, the Johnny Carson raunchy tape video, which is for sale right now, brought out Joan Rivers from the woodwork and uh, and from some other work that she's had. Yes. I don't think she had any woodwork. Well, she worked on his wood, apparently. Uh, Joan Rivers, <laughs> Joan, hi -oh! Joan Rivers uh, saw the Frontier Briss. She apparently had a romp in the hay with Johnny Carson at one point, so she doesn't need to see the video for that. She'd like to see it because she'd like to see which wife he was... Uh, fooling around with, what do you think of that, Eleanor Clift? I go to you twice today, Eleanor. Wow, it's a, a real treat. I uh, <laughs> I just want to know how many metaphors you can string together for <laughs> relations. 
That's 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 what I'm waiting for. That's the, that's my takeaway from this story. How many variations can Johnny Carson have on the name Joan for a connubial or whatever kind of bliss? He his first three wives all were variations of Joan or Joanna, and then he does it with Joan Rivers as well. He knows what he it, likes. It's of a piece right there, and that is talking back and forth. <laughs>